Okay, thanks for staying with us. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Let's talk tech now. Uh, Nigerian tech talent is gaining global recognition and uh, contributing to major companies and startups globally, raising Nigeria's profile as a hub for innovation. Cities like Lagos, Abuja, and Port Harcourt have become centers for tech entrepreneurship, with Lagos attracting local talent and foreign investment as businesses continue to thrive amidst the ever changing technological. Uh, atmosphere, it is important to understand what role tech innovations play in the operation and sustainability of both large and small scale businesses. To discuss this with me is Kainde Ogundari, country manager at Zoho Corporation Nigeria. Good morning and welcome to the program, Kenny. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Yes. Okay, uh, let's begin with uh, all these uh, glowing things we're talking about tech. We've been talking about tech in Nigeria and saying it's, very, it's growing very fast, just like the entertainment industry. Tech is uh, something that we really should be proud of. But where are we on the rung of the ladder when you talk about global tech innovations? You know, are we halfway there? Are we at the bottom ladder? Or are we just comfortable where we are? All right, thank you very much. Um, I think we're on our way to get there, right? Because now, I think it's very important to know that corporate innovation is very essential for any company that wants to stay ahead in the market and continue to succeed in the long run, you know? Because now, businesses are getting to understand that it is important and imperative for them to actually adopt technology to run their business. So I think we are getting there. We, we are not where we used to be, but we are not there yet. Mm. However, I think it's very important to notice to note that Nigeria is getting to that point where technology is becoming um, our go-to for innovation, for scaling your business, and especially for business owners, it's very important. And we have also seen increase in people using technology to run their day-to-day -day activities. Mm. So what are, the, what are the things that are militating against a, a faster growth in technology in Nigeria? Okay, so the faster growth in technology in Nigeria is number one. I think post-COVID, a lot of things have changed. And also, the adoption of technology in Nigeria, especially for business owners when it comes to business landscape, is the fact that there is business continuity. And now, majority of Nigerian business owners, they have smartphones, they have access to internet, and I think the government is doing a great job in trying to also increase the range and also increase um, internet accessibility. So when you have that and you also have technology to be able to continue your business so i think adoption is because everybody wants to scale and given the fact that the economy currently is not really stable everybody is looking for a way to reduce cost at the same time look for a way to maximize profit so i think that is one of the major driver for technology adoption in the market today uh, yes but what could for for instance the government do better to make tech grow even faster um, yes. So what the company can do better, number one, is to also increase the accessibility to internet and the infrastructure is very important. One of the things that we lack in Nigeria is infrastructure when it comes to power supply, when it comes to internet accessibility, when they even come to smart devices. Most of these things are really expensive, so we need to find a way to actually produce them locally and also enhance our infrastructure architecture in the country. So that we won't have any time whereby the network is done for hours and business owners are left stranded. So I think government should do better in providing infrastructure and also creating policies that will make cloud services accessible and safe for every business owner within the country. Yeah, but when we talk about infrastructure, it seems like it's supposed to be a very, a very big project that cannot be affordable or it will take so much time. Uh, uh, let me take inspiration from, the, from Zoho itself. Zoho, uh, I think I understand it means uh, small home, small office, something like that, which yes. means you don't need small the entire office, world before you can, you can create something that will have an impact on the whole thing. So uh, what... How, how, how expensive or how difficult will it be for the government to put the inf infrastructure you're talking about in place to make sure that people have access to uh, technology as much as they should? Um, so I wouldn't really say um, the government should um, provide technology per se. The infrastructure right? you were talking about, that's what I'm saying. Infrastructure, yes. Infrastructure and enabling environment. So we have the Ministry for Communications, you know, we have them in place to put things in place for business owners working in that in industry. 
Now, Zoho is a tech company we provide technology for running your organization for your sales, marketing, human resource. So we already have the software and products in the market that people can actually use. So how can so how can the government improve infrastructure? Number one, I talk about internet accessibility. So what can the what are the policies that we really can put in place to make sure that Nigerians get good internet um, supply on a daily basis? Power supply as well. So we are using devices, laptop, mobile phone. Business owners need to run their business on their iPad. You know, so if they put those things in place, it is easier for business owners to adopt technology and then be able to continue using it. Using Zoho, for example, our software, they are all cloud-based. So which means on your mobile phone, you can be working on the go, whether you are in traffic, whether you are at the office, um, anywhere you are in the world, you'll be able to work. However, there is no point in having that device when there is no power, when there is no internet. So that is what I'm saying about improving the infrastructure availability for business owners within the ecosystem. Okay, sometimes we take for granted that this is a technological age and everybody knows uh, that these are the tools that are available. But I assure you that even the best of us, some do not know uh, what kind of tools are available there to make their businesses uh, run better. In fact, I, I give you an instance. There was a time when they were, we were talking about cashless economy. Uh, there were businesses that bluntly refused that they were not going to use POS machines because their excuse was, mm. my business has not grown so much that I will use POS machine. And I was like, okay, <laughs> what are you really talking about? So that is still the mentality. So if we take for granted that people know these things and they're using these things, we might be making a mistake. So we will mm. be looking at, or we are, we're trying to be looking at a situation where we can, we can leave that thought apart and begin to tell people that Hey, for instance, this and that and that are available. And speaking of that, when you're talking of growing your business, what are some of the tools that technology has provided specifically that can make your business grow well? Thank you very much. I At least Zoho, Zoho does a lot of all other things. If you don't know about any other one, you will talk about Zoho. <laughs> Fantastic, great. So I'm going to be talking about Zoho, using Zoho as an example. And I also, this is one of the topics that is actually very dear to my heart. Because when it comes to scaling and scaling a business, it is important and imperative to use technology. Now, I'm going to be mentioning three departments, business units, like we call them. Number one, I think it is very important for business owners to have a productive and a very professional email address and website. Mm. Now, to get an email address, all you need to do is subscribe to our Zoho Mail platform, for example. And if you're a small business owner, it's going to be free for you, up to five users. So the software is already there. Now, so you have a professional email address. The typical example that I normally give to business owners is when you are speaking to a businessman and you ask for their email address, and they tell you that my email address is kinday at zoho.com, there is a level of credibility that your business attain by having a corporate email address. We might just say, because personally, when you have the general generic email addresses, we don't take that business seriously. But the moment you get an email with your business name.com, it gives you and enhance your credibility in the market. So that is number one. So the perception of anybody doing business with you is that, oh, this business owner is a professional. Secondly, is marketing department. Now, this is the age and time for digital marketing. So how do you manage your digital presence, your brand awareness on cloud? So social media is a very powerful tool, and there are two of them, social media and email. So Zoho Social is our social media marketing platform to run your marketing across all digital media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, all of them. You'll be able to manage them, understand your customer engagement, understand your brand perception, what people are saying about your brand. And the second part that is also very powerful too is an email marketing tool. To do an email marketing tool, you need to subscribe to a platform like Zoho Campaigns, for example. And with this one, you'll be able to send out email. Not only that, you get a step further by being able to get analysis, analytics of your campaign. So you want to know how many people open the email. I want to know how many people actually click on the link in the email. You want to know how many people actually responded to the email. So when you're doing your sales activities, it is targeted towards those people that are actually interested in hearing your business and knowing what you do. So it saves you a lot of time. And then lastly, you need to find a way to optimize your sales process. So you need to be able to nurture your sales through the sales pipeline. You know, by working with them, you want to understand, okay, 
oh, Kenny wants to buy this particular product from me, and you need a CRM tool to do that. If you think you are a small business, we also have tools on our platform, on Zoho platform called Zoho Begin. It's a small tool that you can use. Uh, Zoho Begin is a small CRM sales pipeline management software. You'll be able to manage that. And then, you know, there are a lot of tools, but importantly for me, I think it's very important for you to manage your marketing department with Zoho campaigns or Zoho social. I think it's very important for you to manage your email marketing as well that by using our email marketing tools. You able to upscale your business. Okay, so um, now we know that this is it, uh, even though uh, you were being partial to your own brand, but uh, uh, we forgive you because that is what you know. Okay, so, yes, yes. I'm sorry, thank you. It's, it's all right, it's all right. Now, uh, so businesses in Nigeria are struggling right now, and you're seeing a lot of people are using, uh, they're using technology, but more needs to be done. If we want to take this evangelism to the people, what else do you think we can do as a people? So as a people, I think we need to change our mentality and our perception of what technology is all about. When you speak to people, their understanding of technology is big coding, programming language, but that is not it. For any business owner, if you can actually use WhatsApp message, if you can use Instagram, if you can use social media to post, comment, that is you using technology. And then if you can actually post your product on, on, on a digital platform, online comment and get customers so we need to change our perception about technology you don't need to be a programmer you don't need to be a coder to understand that technology is here for your business and secondly i think companies like ours we need to do more in sensitizing people telling them about what we have and now we can also help them scale up their business and also we can partner with communities partner partner with um training institutes um sme focus group or even startup community to give them education about how they can actually use technology to run their day-to-day -day activities mm. who should who should who should be at the vanguard of that who should facilitate that because you are different we have uh technological uh, technology companies uh, scattered all over here should there be a body that will be in charge of this or every individual company should be doing their own sensitization? Um, I will also go back to government. I think government is, what I, is the body that brings everybody together. You know, if there is a, if there is a policy that the government can create whereby you have a body that, uh, that brings everybody together on how to sensitize the community is very important. And also, I think government should be open to partner with private sector to educate the local and the rural area people, even the urban people, about the benefits of technology. So I think government should also do more in that regard, in that aspect. Okay. But are the technological companies doing enough in terms of CR CRS? Is that how it is? CRS? CSR. Yeah, CSR, yeah. <laughs> are they doing enough in yes. terms of CSR? Uh, to make sure that uh, their presence is felt and the people are also happy about what they're doing? Um, I won't be able to speak to other companies, but I can speak to us at Zoho, what we've done in the last couple of months, especially this year. All right? I think and also it's very important to be able to give back to the community. Like I said, a sensitization training and all of this is a way of easing people into adoption of technology. And from our side, we've been able to do that. We've partnered with a couple of uh, women-focused organizations, Tech, Hills and Techs. Uh, for example, we did a three, we did a three, a powerful three-day training with them. You know, and these are women from all walks of life, from students to even up to a 65-year-old woman coming to learn about the no-code, low-code platform. And we also did that with She Code, and we also also currently, recently, we announced our uh, our scholarship program for Bridge International School Academy, you know, whereby we are sponsoring about 200 uh, students across three African countries. And then we're going to be providing the entire student with school bags, uniform, okay. shoes okay. and all of that. Okay, okay, kind of. You've done enough. All right. Well, um, <laughs> we do hope that uh, we get more of that because that is what we're looking out for. We do hope also that the tech companies will be able to uh, collaborate with government and make sure that the, the curriculum of our schools will change to embrace technology more than it is doing right now because I'm not sure there's enough uh, talk about technology in our school curriculum. Ex maybe f 
private institutions. But government schools, from primary to secondary school, I'm not sure there's so much talk about technology. But we do hope that you'll have that rapport and find a way that this can be incorporated in our schools. Uh, but at this point, we'll have to drop it. Uh, Kende, thank you so much for coming on the program and enlightening us on what we need to do. Thank you for coming. All right. All right. We've been talking with Kende Ogundare, Country Manager, Zoho Corporation, Nigeria, and we're looking at technology and uh, uh, businesses, uh, uh, today's businesses, and we're being encouraged that a lot of things are in the technological world that we may not even know about, and so we should take advantage of that. If you don't know what to do, you can contact the people, uh, the producers or the, yeah, of those uh, apps and everything that you you need to use and they will advise you that was what I was looking for so that free advice is there that free tutorials are there uh, to make sure that you use this technology to advance your businesses don't think that you are you need to be as big as Dangote before you can do anything or you can use technology it is what makes a lot of people now uh, to advance their businesses and grow more than they could have grown maybe 50 years ago or 20 years ago even uh, that is that for technology and businesses. We are going to be looking at NNPCL uh, quitting their role as the middleman in the Dangote Refinery Petrol Purchase next. Stay with us. <music>